A Ruby block can be very complicated, but actually can be simplified in your mind very easily. A Ruby block is simply anything you do or put between a do and end block. Oops, hello. Now, where the magic happens is how methods simply use blocks or run your code, and this allows for personalization in Ruby. So if I have a block and I write code between a do and end statement, I have to do more than that. I need to give my block to a method so that a method can perform my block. In this case, the easiest method is the is the dot times method in Ruby. So if I do five dot times and then run this with control B, I see here that my block is run, is run five times. Hello is printed out cinco times. Okay? So with that with that blocks also have block parameters or the ones that do get passed in parameters. So to gain access to a block parameter, you simply use the pipe brackets as some people call them and give yourself a parameter in between those pipe brackets. Then you can use that parameter within your block. So simply if I print out hello with n, I can see that I have hello, zero, one, two, three, and four. Now, if I wanted to start at a different number than zero, I could use one dot up to five to get one dot up to five and get rid of the times, obviously. Run it with control B and I'll get hello, one, two, three, and four. So now we've seen the simplest way to do blocks, but there also is a way to do blocks in one line. As you can see here, we only are using one statement. We're using a put statement. If we wanted to make this into one line per se, what we could use is we could use the curly brackets, put this put statement up here, and then end it with another curly bracket, run this, and we see we get the same output. Just to show you guys, I'll make this a seven, and then run this output, and you can see I have hello, one, two, three, four, etc., all the way up to seven. So that's how do you do multi-line blocks, single line blocks, and allow block parameters. Now, what this code is doing is it's iterating through the numbers one through seven and passing them to a block. And what we can do is we can simply show how this is done by making a method. We can illustrate the concept of calling your own Ruby block by making a method that yields the method to the block passed in. Now the way we can do this is by creating a method, we'll call it count and we'll take in a parameter. Then we'll add the ending keyword. Now this count method is gonna look pretty simple. It's gonna be a counter variable that's gonna use a while loop. And while the counter is less than param, we are going to, at the end of a while loop, increment counter by doing a plus equals one. And then every time we begin the while loop, we're gonna yield our block, our method to our passed in block. And we're gonna pass in the parameter of counter. Now, if you'll notice here, I only have one parameter, which is actually gonna be what we're gonna to count to. I don't have a block parameter as per se. And the reason because I don't have a block parameter is because, well, we don't need one. If I want to call count here, I can do count, pass in five, and then pass in a block. And let's do puts hello. And then I can run it. And I can see that I have just all these hellos right here. And if I want to do, again, my parameter of n, I would need to have an n parameter applied to my block. I can see I have hello zero through four, just as my method requires. So every time I call yield, I am simply saying, okay, run my block with these parameters, if you choose to have parameters. So that's why yield is so powerful, because it allows me to add, you know, adaptability and variability to my methods. Thanks guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a likes up. 
and go check out my article on my website for more information on Ruby blocks.